But let's talk about you know this this really uh, fateful moment yeah. where where so, you and your brother got my, introduced to Eminem. Absolutely. So he was on an open mic night at or day whatever. I think it was in the daytime for uh, ninety six three, and he had called up to the radio station one of the DJs that were there, and he asked who 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 was that. Mm-hmm. And she says, some kid named Eminem. And this is off like a 30 second freestyle, freestyle. right? He just yeah, started may, over may the radio. Not, yeah, it's 30, 60 seconds, something. Okay, right. Nothing, nothing crazy, but um, whatever it was, my brother heard that and said, oh my God, I have to talk to this kid. So he gets in touch with him, and Eminem and his posse at the time. Uh, which was D12, right? Which happened to be right. D12, <laughs> yeah. but didn't know that at mm-hmm. the time. Uh, it was proof and and all those Swifty in them, and they came into the studio. And my brother, like he was like, I know it. This is, this is crazy. He called me up. He says, you got to see this kid. You got to hear him. So, the next day, I went there to hear what my brother was talking about. He was convinced this was the next big thing. I listened to it, and I was like, dude. You, you need to slow down because I'm not really understanding what you're saying. You said triple time, just you couldn't, Crazy. Un- you couldn't make... You know how rap God is, right? Yeah. Well, uh, it seemed even worse than that. I mean, it was... Basically, a- machine gun lyrics for those yeah. that don't know, right? And exactly. Just, he, he was excited, though. I do understand that part. But yeah. that was also his style. I, t- I said, all right, well, so we, my brother and I went over to our manager, this Joel Martin, and said, look, look listen to this. Mark thinks it's something. I think I don't know what it is. He didn't like it so much. But Mark brother was like, yeah, nah, we, we got to do something with it. So I was like, all right, well, we're partners. I, I fight it. So <laughs> I brought him <laughs> into the studio. And from that point, we started working with him, letting him um, kind of find himself at the same time as us grooming what we thought he should be. And go more into that. What did, what was the vision that you guys saw? Okay, so the the vision, obviously, the first thing that I thought of was a white rapper. So who do, who do we all think of? Vanilla, Vanilla Ice, Ice at yeah. the time, right? Which uh, um, you want to do anything in your power to avoid. And I didn't want to come out like that. Mm-hmm. If I'm gonna like start getting into the hip hop world somehow, and you know, but I was listening. <laughs> This was really the first opportunity for a credible white rapper, I feel mm-hmm. like, right? Exactly, but you didn't, you know, we didn't know. You weren't my brother aware knew. of that. Something time. in okay. my brother's yeah. head he knew. Right. I don't know what it was, but, you know, and thank God, but yeah. he did feel something. Yeah. And I f- didn't feel something until halfway through the Infinite album. Which was the very first project? Very first project. Okay, okay. And, and then I saw how talented he, you know, I started to understand understand what it was mm-hmm. that he was doing. He created these stories on top of a cool track. Mm-hmm. You know, and I, I liked that. Like, like he started, he was saying something. So I would watch him almost like a psychologist would watch facial mm-hmm. expressions, body. So I would watch, what was he bringing to the studio today? Like, he was miserable. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm gonna have to create a piece of music that keeps him miserable today. He, I knew he was, miserable or angry so and if he heard an angry m- track of music he could ac- he could actually express himself uh, through that music those that emotions day. stirred up so, right and it, yeah and, and it yeah. sounded like they fit like a glove mm. like the, it's like they were meant for each other you know his lyrics on top of that music plus the type of melodies that we would come up with for him to you know, sing and, and stuff like that, like choruses, hooks. Now that, that you're mentioning this, I feel like there, if I had to just like describe in one word how I felt after like an Eminem song, I felt like it was cathartic for him. Right. Yeah. So that's amazing. And so it was me, he was able to tell mm-hmm. ex- and get it out. Yeah. Exactly the way he was feeling it on the inside. Yeah. And wow. so I was able to tap into that musically for him. Artists don't get that a lot of times. A lot of times artists just go, here, this is the song, do it this way. Yeah. But when you're collaborating like that. You're locked in like that. You're locked in like that, and you're like reading emotions and everything. the magic happens, man. Right, and we, it seemed like we could do this whenever we wanted to do it. I just had to watch what he was doing. Wow. Watch how he was feeling. Watch how his day was going. What was one of the first songs, um, maybe, Go towards like the Slim Shady EP. Uh, EP? Or, yeah, yeah. What was uh-huh. one song off there that was a really special song? Or Bonnie moment? and Clyde. 
Yeah. Okay, yeah. Just the two of us. Yeah, just yeah. the two of us, right. Right. So a lot of that stuff on the EP, mm -hmm. obviously, were, was uh, samples on there. But he essentially, on the Bonnie and Clyde song, it's like where he... Kills uh, his wife. Kills his wife, and he's driving with his daughter. He's explaining to his daughter Correct. what went down. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So she was very, 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 very young at that time. Yeah. Like, she couldn't even really speak English. Wow. She was like mama, dada. That's wow. how young she was. Wow. And we had her in the studio on 8 Mile in Detroit. As he was uh, recording Yeah, and this. we were recording her, too. Like, all the sound effects. Were really like, her? Yeah, I all thought, her. I thought... No, that was her. Oh, that's incredible. Yeah, and the, the crickets, all the, 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 the street noise. That's... We threw a microphone out on 8 Mile Road and started recording. That's amazing, man. Yeah. So Not like a lot we, of people would be nah, aware no of No one that. really yeah, knows yeah, that, yeah. but that's, yeah. we, we were doing the trunk sound, everything. You yeah. know, you can get sound effects, <laughs> like, but we, did, we went out there on 8 Mile at 3, 4 o'clock in the morning and just put a microphone out there. Got, so this way, when, when he got in the studio to rap, yeah. he felt all those sound Sounds, effects right there. Wow. It was amazing how we did that. I'm a, I'm a big believer in timing plays such a key role, obviously, in success, right? right. And, and uh, you know, with the boy band popularity with the NSYNC and the Backstreet Boys, all that was like at its height. Yeah. And here comes along Eminem, who's like the antithesis of all that. Correct. You can't script that, right? Which it's is why like, he yeah, was making crazy. fun of it back yeah, then. You we know? needed that. We needed that voice. We did because was... because you know uh, the fans out there were going, "Oh man, enough of this yeah. bubble gum," which is the same thing I did years earlier with the Jacksons, the Osmonds. You know, yeah. It's just, it's just this is what happens. It just recycles. So I used to crack up when he would want to make fun of <laughs> the Backstreet Boys in one of us a song that like really you're going to start. Because, yeah, it's funny. I'm yeah. like, okay. Because he really, that, he has... Would you try amazing... and talk him out of it? No. Well, no, no, I just yeah. didn't understand it at first. Like, okay. like, or we're in the middle of a song, and I'll say, you want me to, to stop the music and come up with something else that goes with one of their things, but that he's going to use totally different words, and just give me the feel of what that was. And I'm like, oh, yeah. okay, I'll do that. Yeah. But I, at first, I didn't understand why, and then when it all came together, I was like, that was pretty... Genius. New kids on the block, block suck, suck a, a lot, lot of dick. dick. Boy, girl groups make me sick. Right. <laughs> and so I totally, I, just, I totally yeah. played something that sounded like shit. Yeah. I he, that. And he was like, "That's perfect. I want it to sound like shit." Like, oh, that's right. Okay, I get it. You know. Yeah. And so his, he he was open to do. We were both open. Me as a producer, him as an artist, we were open to experiment with like crazy stuff like that. And I never wanted to tune his vocals, ever, when he sang. There was no auto-tune or melody or none of that? Not, not when you were involved? No, yeah. not when I was involved. Later, <clears throat> later on, yes. But, mm -hmm. but not when I was there. I'm like, you know, especially even like Kim, that song uh, was, when, when I wrote it, it was meant to have someone like Marilyn Manson or Ozzy Osbourne mm -hmm. sing the hook. So I said, Em, go in there and just sing the hook so that we have it on tape and we, then we can show Marilyn or whoever we're gonna get on there what the part is supposed to be. Mm -hmm. And then I'm like, nah, forget it. You sound great. It's out of tune, it's perfect, it sounds raw. And that was part of what his sound was, early Eminem was mm -hmm. kinda raw. Yeah. He, what he was doing was raw, so why not your track sound raw too? You singing sounds raw? Because you're not a singer, you're a rapper. but. He was able to pull that up, and no one judged it. Like, oh my God, listen to his voice. That yeah. sounds like shit. No, they were like, wow, that's how I sound when I'm in the shower. I sound like that. Yeah. You know what I mean? So yeah. people started to relate, and it's cool to be able the to. The raw emotion is what's most grabbing, isn't it? Correct.